It's really a simple question. What does an island in the middle of nowhere do with its waste? Waste is often an overlooked part of modern day life. We simply throw our waste into a bin and for the average person the problem is over, never having to think about that empty carton of milk ever again. For the island of St Helena, the problem is further enhanced by limited resources and the unique size and location of the island. Therefore, in this video, we explore the story of waste on St Helena Island. Located in the middle of the South Atlantic Ocean, with the nearest major landmass of West Africa being over a thousand miles away and with its population of just under 4,000 people, St Helena stands as one of the most remote and unique inhabited places on Earth. The people, culture, landscape and wildlife is something only a very lucky and adventurous few will get to experience. However, with its unique location and size, a new problem occurs. What happens to the waste generated on the island? So I'm Terry Clingham. I'm the Environmental Officer for uh, Environmental Management Division, which forms part of ENRP, Environmental Natural Resources and Planning Portfolio of SHG. We got two uh, refuse collection vehicles. Uh, they got their routes around the island, collect every day, well, Monday to Friday and Sundays in town. That's both domestic and commercial waste. So everything that's being collected by the RCV um, in your usual 240 black bin is landfilled. The top three types of waste that's being disposed of at the landfill currently is kitchen waste, followed by plastics, and then closely followed by paper and cardboard. The remaining useful life of Horsebond landfill site, calculated in 2015, was 12 years without active intervention. While some initiatives and ingenuity has yielded sustainable benefits, the site life remains relatively unchanged. The cost of developing and constructing a new airport compliant landfill site, similar facilities as Horse Point, was three million pounds, also calculated in 2015. Today, this cost could now be in excess of four million pounds. What we need to be concerned about is how much time, what's the remaining life that we have of Horse Point landfill site? In 2015, it was calculated that the landfill would be fully utilised and maxed out by 2027 to 2030. Um, so again, without active intervention and changing the way we do things, rather than burying, putting everything in the ground, you know, 2027 to 2030, a new landfall, first question, where? And the next question is obviously the costs. I think it was calculated back then, 3 million times the change, you know, everything goes up, not down. So that's probably in excess now for could be even reaching 5 million to design, build and construct and make it operational. The people of St Helena clearly face a unique problem with its waste. However, thanks to the ambition and determination of the island's people, there seems to be solutions on the horizon. Let's start with the story of Roddy. My name is Radney and um, I'm a chicken farmer by trade, actually. But I do recycling on the side as a second job and help clean up the island. A while back, I used to take my dogs to walk, which I still do, in a forest, in a natural forest. And you see cans and stuff all in there. So I used to take a bike along with me and put up cans as I go. And then one day, I, I run into Mike Danford. I said to him about if... They like to pay me to get the cans, you know, and they can recycle them. And he said, oh, he said, be looking for somebody to actually to do some recycling. And I, it was good. It had a good time. And then the uh, government's office, they sponsored the, the funding for, for all the machines and that. And that's how it begins, actually. Yeah. Here, I keep it simple. The ENRD is a partnership. They supply all the blue beans for me. And if you see behind me, there's different, all different colors. But the blue ones are strictly for a drinking can. Yeah? So they supply me, they scour around the island. 
they got a particular vehicle that pick up all these bins and bring them all to the, the site over there. And then I go there and I sort through them because they mix sometimes and, and a lot of bottles being there. So you sort through them and you bring them here to this place. Uh, and I put them through a machine that makes sure it's just alley and not nothing else. So it's got a magnet in it. So if it's a steel pan or anything in that alley, it will take it out. And then I put them into a press there and you get a like 25, 27 cubic. Square cube come out. Not square, not cube, but you know, it's more rectangle than cube. But a small 25 kilo cube that. I, I, I want to be doing this, you know, for the next, you know, into the future, another 10 years or so, if I can be doing this, you know, as long as I can get here and be able to, you know, be able to do it. I like to carry on doing it, you know? Um, I think it's bad as people, some people say, oh, you're out here in the rubbish and that. Um, but at the end of it, you know, you get something from it and you, and you, and you do a new part of keeping the environment safe for future generations, you know, and without all the pollution of mining and getting all these materials to make this stuff. Yeah. My name is uh, Dion Roberta. I currently I'm working for SSG as the roads and building maintenance manager. Upcycling is uh, one of my passions. It's actually a hobby. Uh, I always go to tips and dumps and see if there's something that I can maybe use and can fix, uh, especially on St. Helena. The first time when I went to the dump, it was amazing what was uh, discarded there. I started gathering stuff and I have been doing that for the last 13 years that we've been on island. I love my woodworking and uh, wood lathe to me is, is definitely one of the things that you, if you don't have a wood lathe, there's very few items that you can substitute a wood lathe with. I mean, if you want to turn something in wood, you need a wood lathe. I mean, there's no, there's no other way of doing it. And I said, you know what, I'm going to make it my mission to see if I can build this without spending any money on it. Even the bolts that keeps a wooden frame together, everything. If you start at the wall plug, it comes from a computer. It goes into a motor and the on and off switch comes from an old concrete mixer that the motor was thrown away, didn't work. I came, tested it, found the capacitor to be faulty. Oh, I went to the dump and found one capacitor in the a tumble dryer. So I put the capacitor, tested the motor, the motor works fine. The belt comes from a washing machine. The headstock is manufactured, it's just a wooden box. And the headstock itself is an old, electrical motor that I use the armature as where my belt runs over and I made three pulleys on the electrical motor so my lathe is free speed so you know I won't say slow medium fast but one slower and than the other having the base of a wood lathe is, is a wooden piece of table that I picked up at the dump as well all the pieces of wood is shutterboard that I picked up there the wood working piece uh, runs onto. It's also an electrical little armature motor, two bearings and a little uh, wooden box to keep it stable. And then, yeah, it's just wooden guides at the bottom. It can slide up and down. The piece that you put your chisels on is a um, nice square little piece of aluminium that I found. And uh, I basically just use that as my piece where my chisels can rest on. All the little turnbuckles and, and, and clamps that is in there is, is stuff or bolts with a little handle that I pick up and say, you know what, just put it in my box, put it in my box. And then I start going through the boxes and say, oh, like this, this, this I can use. So yes, and, and then it's trial and error. I, I probably took it apart maybe three, four times because you start it up and this thing wobbles or that thing is unsafe or something. So yeah, it probably might not pass all safety standards, but... I've used it. Uh, my boys have they've turned little pieces. There's a piece on there now that they just playing with at the moment. But yeah, at the end of the day, standing here doesn't cost me a cent, um, and it's working. It's a working wood lathe. Uh, I c cannot turn two meter pieces, but yeah, for what I need it, this is exactly what I need. So. It's almost like an inner satisfaction. It's like some people run. To me, it's something I repurpose. Something that people will throw away. Yeah, it's, it, I've always, it's just 
the way I've been brought up. My dad is a very, very handy man. There's nothing he could not fix. And I basically, from a young age, spent some time with him. Yeah, he taught me how to fix lawn mowers, how to fix a little motorbikes. And then he went on into a bit of mechanic, car mechanics and woodworking and things like that. And it's always been in my blood. It's, yeah, it's my adrenaline rush is to build something and to fix something. So uh, yeah, I'm enjoying it. There's often an understanding amongst the St. Helenian people that in order to live on the island, you're going to have to be resourceful and get a little creative. This notion has been carried on to now tackle the island's waste problem. With a mixture of government-led projects and creative ideas from locals, the island's future is certainly looking a lot brighter.